Hi, my name is Richard Pennycook and welcome to Export Kit. In this example, I'll be demonstrating a Photoshop PSD to CSS3 styles and classes using Export Kit Suite version 126. Now, when we begin, there are a few new features for 126. Uh, these are the actual layer tags and I'll go over them really quickly, but I'll explain them in a bit more detail once the export begins. The first is our CSS styles tag. What this will do is treat this folder as a container for our global styles. Now, in this this, basically any layer that you have directly within the folder will be treated as global and you can then further override them in your child uh, classes and I'll show you a quick demonstration so for instance we have our text description here which will maintain all the actual layer effects and can treat that as an actual class but within our fire theme we have a sub and we have a description here which will override our global style now, the next thing that we want to take a look at is our tag for our actual layer elements, and you'll see this here. This is denoted basically by CSS style, which is singular, and the actual class name that you wish to apply. And right here, what we have in our layer content is we have a basic wireframe for our content. And under this, if you look at it, we also have basically our CSS styles. Now, you'll note that off the bat, these are just shapes. That's what we actually use to create them, and you'll see them here. For CSS, you don't really need to create the actual element that you want to use. You can just create a container basically here with the shapes and then we'll apply the styles to them later using the classes. You'll note within each of the layers that we actually have our individual classes applied to them. Now this is reflective again of the actual classes that we've defined in our CSS styles folder. If we go back to the PSD itself, you'll see that this content is skipped. This is because what we're doing is we're actually using the skip tag, and you can see it here, for this layer. So if we were to basically zoom out and hide this layer, you'll see that the only thing left are our actual CSS styles. Now, any CSS style, it is not included in the output, both visually and in code. But elements that we skip, they are just basically removed visually. You'd have to use dynamic height to ensure that the content will only be restricted to the area that you wish. And you'll see this in the output when we're finished. Only this region will be basically processed. So if we go back and we unhide the skip just so we can read it. What we have here is we have our layer styles. And what we have is our global styles. You'll see this here. So this is our background for our image. We also have our icon. We have our individual nav buttons and you'll see in our layer structure, left and right is only within a class that has a parent of nav. And this is great for when you're structuring CSS code to where you want to apply individual themes. You'll see our theme structure here where we've included three just as a test. You'll see our default theme where this is applied only to the sub button background. We also have an individual label for that theme. Whereas our lime is a bit different. Uh, this is applied to the background of our image itself. This is for the sub image. And then this is for the individual button background and etc. for the fire theme. Now, if you look just a little bit below, we have some recommended export settings and I'll just enable them and then discuss them as the export begins. Now, if you've watched any of our previous videos, you'll note that this is a layer by layer action where Export Kit will process each individual layer based on its type and its structure. There are a few features that we've enabled. The first was CSS images. This will allow us to basically reuse individual div layers and images rather than have multiple images of the same content. So if you're using a button, you can use the same button image basically anywhere you'd like. The next that we enabled was relative positions. This will give us structured code and this is required for when we're theming this is just an advanced feature the other is layer effects simply because we want our effects enabled and we enable dynamic height so that the output will be reflective of the actual content that we want displayed not the entire Photoshop document now the export is almost complete uh, we can just give it a second in production uh, just a note I would recommend that you include only the theme that you require otherwise the more themes you have will basically complete to the more folders and elements so it will become a longer export now, if we take a look at this directly, so let's just open up our web page, go to our output. You'll see that what we have is our default theme, and this is created from our wireframe in our Photoshop document. Now, 
again this content is basic shapes and what we've done is we've applied a CSS style to that shape uh, based on the class structure so let's take a look at the code really quick Now what we want to do is basically just take a look at some of the elements. You'll see that we have our structure which is similar to our actual Photoshop PSD where we have our wireframe which is our default theme along with some of the actual classes that we've applied to the individual layers. So let's take a look really quickly at the Photoshop document. You'll see that we did have three themes and because we included them uh, basically in the folder structure they will be included in the output as well. This is why in production I recommend you only include the theme that you require otherwise all the content will be included so we have lime and fire let's just take a look at both of those now what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna change the theme um, this is just directly in our code view just as an example to denote so let's go from default to lime You'll see that all the CSS content is applied directly to the elements in your HTML output dependent on your Photoshop file. So you'll see that we do have our backdrop along with our stroke. We have another stroke and we have our basic gradient. So we're going to switch to the fire theme and you're going to note the element changes. Again, this is only done with wireframes. So let's go back to the web page. Let's change this to our fire theme. And you'll see simple CSS skinning using styles and classes with export kit version 126. Now you're probably considering to yourself, well, how does the actual code look? So let's take a look at the CSS structure. You'll see that what it does is it creates the classes based on your actual layer structure and what it will do is it will nest the parent-child relationship dependent on your folder structure in your Photoshop PSD. So you'll see our styles and we can take a look at button label, we can take a look at nav left right and if we go back to our CSS we'll see we have nav left and right and we have our button label. Now you can go as intricate as you'd like with the parent-child structure and what this will do is give you full control of your HTML output before you even output.